Welcome to Blender Days, a podcast about media. I'm Jacana. And I'm Jordan. And today we're going to be discussing the uh, 1990s Disney Hercules movie. I should probably have some information pulled up about Hercules. Let me. All right. So we watched this movie the other day. It's a, it's a movie that I had grown up and I'd seen quite a few times throughout my childhood. I wouldn't say it was like my favorite or anything, but I did always enjoy watching it. I'd, Jordan, I don't know uh, how many times you'd seen it in your childhood oh, like or ever. Never. never. No, I've never seen. Well, I guess I've seen it like twice now, but. Yeah, but only with me in the course of our relationship. Yeah. Okay. So it was released in 1997. Yeah. It was good. Uh, one thing I really like about this movie is it's a time capsule of the time it was produced, not of the time it was made of. Like, <laughs> their their portrayal of Greek mythos and um, Roman like society is so funny because pretty much every other line is a callback to the '90s. And something that was big and happening at the time. Yeah, it is really just a product of its time. Uh, which is some of my favorite movies. Is movies that really can't exist outside of the time period in which they were released. Like, it wouldn't do as well nowadays no. if it was released brand new now. It's also, like, it's not historically accurate. <laughs> no. It's not, like... It's not mythos accurate. No, not at all. It's not even close to the actual story of Hercules. Uh, no, no. And I guess... Something you should know about us, too, is we're fairly big myth um, enthusiasts. Yeah, enthusiasts. So we, we do know the story of Hercules pretty well. And I'm going to be honest with you, that doesn't make me like this movie any less. It was completely inaccurate, but it was such a fun depiction of these characters that I, I couldn't hate it for being inaccurate. That's by far not my problem with the movie at all. Yeah. One really interesting thing I thought that they did with this movie was giving the soundtrack a gospel feel, even though it's about a much different religion and culture than Christianity. Uh, to be specific, they gave it a southern gospel soundtrack. Uh, yeah, they kind of did. I also really like how they gave Hercules not just two loving parents, but four. Because <laughs> we all know that's how it worked. Yeah, Hercules definitely had four loving parents. That's mm, yes, yeah. yes, definitely Hera's son. <laughs> and Hera loved him. Something I always forget about Hercules because that's how we pronounce it is it's actually pronounced Heracles, and it roughly translates for the glory of Hera, which was a huge reason Hera hated him so much because. You know, he's a product of uh, infidelity with Zeus, which is not surprising. But then the lady who had him had the balls to name him for the glory of Hera. Um, <laughs> and that really, really ticked Hera off in the original stories. Uh, uh, and he uh, went his yeah. whole life being called Heracles, like... <laughs> Just a huge jab at Hera. Like, he had to know, like, oh, man, I got to do these 12 trials because I was really a mistake. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like the person who wrote this movie never heard the story of Hercules. They were like, Hercules, son of Zeus. And they were like, that's fine. They knew nothing about Zeus, nothing about ancient Greek. They were like, okay. Um, I mean, the story does have, like, a big kind of Jesus feel to it, too. Like, it Hercules is very, Jesus like, Jesus-y. Um, What's that movie Disney made? No, it wasn't Disney. It was DreamWorks. Prince of Egypt? Yeah, the Prince of Egypt. Uh, it was actually, when did that come out? I am not the biggest fan of... 1998. Yeah, it's a yeah. big Jesus-y era in that time. Yeah, it, that's a good movie, though. I'm not even a huge fan of, like, Christianity's um, mythos, but that's a that's a pretty good movie. It's a... It's a general, like, It's good... a decent movie, yeah. Ralph Fiennes. Who's that? Hey, sorry, he played Ramses. Oh, he's the most beautiful Ramses. Is that the guy? Who... Is Ralph Fiennes, is he the guy that played Voldemort? I don't know. He's got great cheekbones that Ray in... as Ramses, though. I remember that. He's got, like, these, like, really sharp eyes and, like, these beautiful cheekbones. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Ramses is played by Voldemort. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Val Kilmer played Moses and God? I'm getting way distracted, but that's really interesting. <laughs> um, Wait, this guy who played Voldemort in Ramses, can he only play bald people? No, he's got hair. I but yeah, but like, does not he only much, play? He does not have great hair. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let me see the picture. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of forehead. He well, he's older there, though. That he doesn't really change too much. <laughs> 
oh, there he is in 1995. That's oh not. Oh my God, he's got beautiful hair yeah. there. All right, we should probably go back we to the other movie. We probably should cut that Who's, out. Who, who, no, nah, I'm going to leave it on. Who was in Hercules? Um, oh, the lady who played uh, Stephen's mom from Stephen Universe, and then she was also that lady in Spirited Away, is Megra. Susan Egan. That's her name? Uh, apparently, yes. Does she look sassy? She always plays sassy characters. No, she really doesn't look too sassy. Oh. Yeah, no, for Hercules, she was her in the TV show Hercules, she played the same character. Stephen Universe, Stephen Universe Future. Those are the only roles I personally know her from, but I'm sure she's got other work out there oh yeah uh who was hercules tate donovan let me see if i can find anything you know him from um and did michael bolton do the hercules songs because i have a feeling like in the back of my head like i'd read that somewhere long ago but i don't know if it's true you would literally only know this guy from hercules okay that's fine uh he was on the oc i have no idea what that is argo macgyver argo yeah, I don't think you're going to know him from any. Something called Space Camp. Argo sounds familiar. Isn't that like a, the mast of the Argo? Yeah, they reference that in Hercules. That's a Greek story. The Argonauts. They were ants, right? Yeah, but I don't think that's the reference this other movie that he made. You literally know him from nothing. You oh. would know him from nothing. Okay, well, that will be a reoccurring theme on this podcast, though, is I don't know people from anything yeah. ever, especially if they're male actors, <laughs> if we're being honest with ourselves. Well, hold on. There's another Hercules. Like, movie? No, like another actor that played Hercules. Yeah, did they have someone do the singing roles? Oh, uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe he did the singing. Roger Bart. I don't know if he did the voice or the singing. Oh, he's a singer. So he probably did all the singing for yeah. Hercules. We have to bring up that James Woods is um, Hades. I don't know who James Woods is, yeah. but I did really like the portrayal of Hades. They made him... By the, by the way, in my personal opinion, out of the triad of... Um, Hades, Zeus, and Poseidon, I always found Hades to be the most redeemable of the three brothers. Because he didn't do much. Uh, yeah, he did, he, he's the only one who actually did, did his, his job. He did his job, <laughs> yeah. I, and it is, it is interesting to see in this animated movie him depicted as like a sleazy bad guy. Um, a very fun depiction of Hades. Well, yeah, when Zeus is also portrayed as a loving father. Yeah, and I think like Poseidon's barely showing at all. Like he didn't even get speaking lines. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it's like out of the gods, it's Hera, Zeus, and Hades, the only ones with speaking. Hermes. Oh yeah, Hermes. Who's Hermes? He's de is he Polly Shore? Oh my God, is he Polly Shore? Hang on, I'm looking. I don't think so, but I could see it also. He definitely had that. Oh, it's Paul. Sh no, Paul Schaefer, not Polly Shore. That's one thing I know. I don't know who that is. He's got a similar vibe. <laughs> He's a Canadian singer, but he wears, he, it's literally, you know, out. he's wearing those tiny sunglasses in the movie. That's what he looks like. He looks like yeah. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. There weren't really a lot of other like big God name drops there. I mean, there was Aphrodite and Hephaestus and Narcissus. Uh, there was definitely an indication that one of these gods was... Dionysus, but he never gets a name drop. No, I mean, um, it looks like oh, because they have a show, they have a TV show. Like a lot of the other gods have actors, but I think it's from the the TV show. Oh yeah, I was. I never really watched the TV show. I don't know if like any of our listeners have were like that was a part of their childhood, but it wasn't a part of mine. I never. I knew about the TV show. I was. I was aware of it, but yeah, I never um, really like sat and watched it at all. It looks like a lot of the actors reprise their roles. Did it have a lot of seasons? I'm looking for that right now. It's called Hercules Zero to Hero. Ah, oh, that is the best song in the movie. My favorite. Is he is it? bold, no one braver? Is he sweet, our favorite flavor? That's my favorite line from the whole movie altogether. Is that verse from the song Zero to Hero? I think it's a really great depiction of a celebrity just being adored. <laughs> and like, that's how Hercules oh. is depicted, is okay. as like a 1990s sports celebrity. I'm wrong. Hercules Zero to Hero is a film that is the first three episodes of Hercules the Animated Series. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. I didn't know it had a second film. Uh, Hercules, the animated series, ran for two seasons, 65 episodes total. That's pretty good for a, like, straight to Disney Channel. Although those kind of movies were popular. Remember the Little Mermaid movie? A uh, TV series, not movie. Uh, was actually, it, was, it ran pretty long, too, from what I can remember. And it was pretty popular at the time. And then there was the uh, Aladdin series. Also got a TV show that was pretty popular. And um, did Lion King? 
get a TV show that was popular? Uh, Lion King has had several TV shows. I think they have one currently running. Yeah, so like that was a that was a pretty popular thing to do in the late '90s, early 2000s. Is these 2D movies that were big hits got their own TV series? Yeah. Um, I didn't watch many of them, but I am vaguely aware of them because I love to watch Winnie the Pooh, which is on the same channel, and so you get like commercials or advertisements for what's coming up next. So I'll, I'll re- I will read you the plot here of uh, the Hercules TV show. Uh, The series follows Hercules as a young teenager, training as a hero as well as trying to adjust to life with his free-spirited friend Icarus, his future-seeing friend Cassandra, and his trainer Phil. He battles his evil uncle Hades, like all teenagers though. Oh, so he is his uncle in this. Because they never once mentioned that in the movie. No, but he is his uncle, I mean. it's Well, yeah, but they don't indicate in the movie at all that Hades is Zeus's brother. I believe when he's first introduced, Zeus goes, oh, brother. Oh, yeah, but you could just play that off as part of his personality it doesn't seem an indication that they're actually i think it's widely accepted knowledge though that hades is zeus's brother it's also widely accepted knowledge that hercules is not hera's son i don't know that it is in this is it not i don't know it's it widely accepted to me but like how many people only saw this movie and went that's how it is (laughs) i did read a comment not so long ago um, it was like this meme of a thread, probably off of Reddit. And it was this person who was like, I, uh, I had to explain to someone today that the Disney film Hercules is in no way accurate to Greek mythos. And they just, they strongly believed that everything in the movie was accurate. <laughs> I do think the muses should only be portrayed the way that they are in this movie, though. Oh, they're, the muses are my favorite part. Yeah. All of their songs, bangers. Any Hercules song, nah, it's kind of, it's like, okay. Uh, yeah, it looks like Zero to Hero is like, it's a prequel, or the, the TV series is a prequel. Well, it's got to take part in between, like, during the it's time. During and, yeah, during it's during his training. during his But he's like, it's like, he's in school or some shit. That's kind of weird, right? Uh, I mean, yes. their history timeline is all kinds of weird. Because, like, here's Hercules training. But when he goes to Phil for the first time, he's got, like, the mass of the Argonaut. And Achilles is already a hero that's risen and fallen. Which, those two things would have happened after Hercules already started making his claim to fame. Like, the last time we see Hercules in Greek mythos is in the Odyssey. He's already dead and Odysseus finds him in hell. Um, And that's the last time we see him, I believe, this... Before that, one of his last things he does while he's living is give poison arrows that he got. So he still has the poison from the Hydra, which was one of his, I think it was the first of his 12 labors. And he dips his arrows in the uh, Hydra's blood, makes him poisonous. Anyways, he gives one of those poison arrows to an archer who fights in the Trojan War, though I'm having a hard time recalling who it is. But I believe it is that poison arrow that kills Achilles that strikes. It had to have been like um, Paris or someone, right? I Who would got... assume. I don't remember. Anyway, I believe it's his poison arrow that ends up killing Achilles, though not on purpose. And that was one of the last things he did alive in Greek mythos. But his time was his time as a hero alive was depicted quite a bit before the Trojan War. Yeah. Where a lot of like the Master of the Argo, I guess that could have been before Hercules' time. It's hard to say. The Argonauts don't play a huge role in the Trojan War. Really, they're just there at the beginning when um, they're really still arguing about if they're even going to go to war or not. Yeah, so the, the timeline in this Disney film is all kinds of messed up. It's... <laughs> It's along the same lines as the Emperor's New Groove. Like, they're definitely making references to stuff that you shouldn't make references to. Well, they're making stuff to, like, they're making references to everything. They're making references to modern culture. They're making references to ancient culture. They're making references to myths and legends outside of this culture altogether. Yeah. Um, And then with it being (laughs) such a short movie, like, it's very classic Disney. It's like an hour and a half or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, which I do actually miss films that length sometimes i do enjoy the longer films and the fact that you know people who write movies understand that we actually have a longer attention span than that uh, yeah, let's see. but i do like the short movies sometimes i miss that it's, classic it's runtime literally an hour and a half like, <laughs> uh, which means the plot moves along really quite quickly uh yeah 
you know, he's a baby, then he's a teen, then he's a like really buff teen. It's on his 18th birthday or he's 18 on the day that the planets are supposed to align in the movie. Yeah, he's 18. He turns so, 18 when he is supposed to defeat As a kid, Hades. when I was watching it, you know, and you, you start out with he's like a scrawny 16 year old who's like super strong, but he's still scrawny. Yeah. And then by the end of the training, he's like a buff man like he's definitely a man right yeah i thought when i was a kid that he was like a full adult by the end of the training but it's really only been maybe two years yeah it's been about two years he's still a boy he's like <laughs> the town's hero for a couple months and you know, yeah and then he turns 18 so he's 17 by the time he graduates hero school which is crazy yeah. i mean i get in this world he's like not just a demigod he's like a full-blown god i do like before he was incredibly like ripped from his train like he was still stupid strong like he was still like god level strong uh yeah he's very um it's like they took the original hercules superman and jesus and said roll it into one guy yeah make him one person um he's also not depicted as being super smart but then the rest of society is depicted as being super stupid. So he's still like smart compared to everyone else. He's like not an idiot, but he's <laughs> not quite a himbo, as I believe the technical term. <laughs> um, I don't know. I try not to use himbo as a term. It's, mm. uh, I don't know. It's a fun term, but it's I'm a little bit vague on the exact definition of a himbo. Uh, altogether, I think it's a pretty good movie. It's very fun. It keeps my interest the entire time. None of the songs are so bad that they take me out of it, though some of them aren't my favorite. Though some of them are, though. I really like Zero to Hero and the way that they start the movie with the um, muses singing the intro and the history of the Titans, I thought was that's really fun and a great way to introduce this story to show that, hey, it's not going to be accurate. It's about Greek mythology. And this is the background knowledge that you need to be immersed in the story. Yeah. It does that all very fast and quickly with still having a nice fluidity to it, you know? It's definitely not my favorite early Disney movie. No. No, which is why you don't even really remember watching it at all. I don't think I ever did. But it is a pretty good movie all the same. Now, I think I have seen some of the TV show, though. I don't think I ever watched the movie, but I definitely like was browsing like the Disney Channel back in the day and, and, and watched at least a little bit of the movie. Now, that being said, like this movie as for like kids in the current generation. So we have a daughter um, who will probably mention quite a bit. Uh, she's 10 and our daughter is probably one of the few kids who would appreciate this movie and her age group because we have brought her up on 90s media. I think she'd like it, but it's definitely not what she's looking for. No. Like her current favorite show is Yu Yu Hakusho. Gosh, she loves Yu Yu Hakusho. All she wants to do is come home and like watch, just binge watch it. That's the term. Yeah. She just wants to binge watch Yu Yu Hakusho, which is fantastic. I've been enjoying rewatching Yu Yu Hakusho with her. And um, let me say, we're not doing a review on Yu Yu Hakusho currently, but we might. It is got the ba best facial expressions. Like they're not afraid to make their characters look ugly to appropriately display an emotion, and that's kind of fantastic. I don't see it a lot in modern anime, even shown in even modern shown in anime. Like My Hero Academia does not stretch the limits on what facial expression can be nearly as much. No, but that I mean I think the most current show we watched with her though was uh, Steven Universe, and then Steven Universe future yeah but that's like got a whole different animation style it's it is completely different but that's like the most current media we watched with her like that was put out like i think we watched was it teen titans and like danny phantom like, <laughs> and iCarly. yeah we watched like early 2000s like 90s to be fair she loves these I mean, we're not forcing her to watch no, them. We give her an option of a couple shows and we have a family show that we watch together and discuss together and she loves watching these shows uh, that we like revisiting yeah she's like a she's a, a fan of the mandalorian show and she was like nah let's watch you haka show i'll watch that later like we're currently <laughs> watching the mandalorian without her yeah it, even though it's a show she does enjoy um but she just likes she likes you haka show better yeah uh and i i think she would like this hercules but maybe a few years ago i think she's a little she's getting a little too old for it yeah i guess my point though was like a lot of kids in her generation and this new generation of children and young adolescents would not love it. 
as no. much as kids from our generation would because the references are made for a time period in which we grew up and really for no other time. This was not supposed to be a classic that went down in history. It's not like The Little Mermaid or The Princess Bride. It was made for a certain time. And they no. knew that was the only time it would like really flourish. And you, you can tell that it didn't go down as popular as some of the other like Disney movies from the time. Because yeah. it's not getting a live action remake yet. I believe they are going to remake Hercules in oh, live yeah. action. <laughs> we have to visit that Which, when it comes out. First of all, I think they've done that a couple times. Yeah, it's not a story that's really great as a live action like i love the original myth i really do i think it's very fun and over the top but it doesn't translate great to media unless you're gonna do like a a longer term show kind of like the first season of the mandalorian where every episode's 40 minutes and more or less a mini movie yeah but like how do you how do you do the stalls <laughs> how, do you, how do you do a <laughs> live action labor. how do you do a live action hercules uh well like i said you you're gonna take and do kind of a long form show you're gonna make it one season and one season only because we're not gonna get super in depth to like the terrible tragedy that is hercules home life right we're gonna focus mostly on the 12 labors and him becoming a real hero um I, Each episode is a labor with the last episode. Not, I, I think it's going to be a movie. It's not going to be a TV show. It's going to be a movie. Well, that's how I would do it. I yeah. wouldn't do it as a movie. I just wouldn't. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to look it up because I'm just on wait and see, honestly, uh, if they're still making a movie. But like, you can't, it's going to be like how they did Mulan or Aladdin. I hated the new Mulan, by the way. Just putting that out there. Oh, both of those movies were terrible. I love the original Mulan. Um, love the, it. The, Dis the original Disney Mulan is... It's fantastic, but that's because it has that same weird energy that this movie has. Right. It takes place. It's got a it's got a distinct setting in history that it doesn't keep to. No. Um, and yeah, that's like true for Hercules, Emperor's New Groove, Mulan, um, uh, Aladdin. Yeah, they're not they're not afraid to make the references. And the problem with like Aladdin is they didn't make those references. I thought Will Smith was fine as Genie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Probably was, the best part of the I was movie. Gonna, he was the best part. Um, I liked the way the actor they picked for Aladdin looked. I thought I thought he I thought, looked good. I as thought all Aladdin. the actors actors were chosen well. Yeah. Uh, I thought uh, Jafar could have been scarier, but that's Jafar fine. could have been scary. Uh, and I think my least favorite part that took me completely out of the movie was like Jasmine's woman power song. That was really. It, um, like, I found it completely unnecessary and cringy, and they were trying to give her like a nice spotlight and woman power, but I think they could have done that. I think they could have done less with more. Yeah, they didn't want with less. I see what they were doing. They didn't want to make her like the damsel in distress because it's not very empowering to modern day women. Uh, no, but if you watch the original, she's not the she's, person in distress. She like kicks ass, and she she's, at the end she like really plays a, a double agent, which is pretty badass and takes a lot of like bravery to do. Yeah, she's just she's overpowered by Jafar, who's literally a wizard, <laughs> right? And she's just like an average teenage girl. Yeah. Well, not an average teenager. She's a princess. But nonetheless, she is very brave for her own standards, being a cooped up teenage girl who doesn't have magic powers. I also don't care for the fact that they gave Genie a love interest. Did they? I can't even yeah, remember Yeah, he, he like gets married and has kids at the end. That's... And like the whole movie is him telling the story to his kids. Oh, well, that's probably taken a lot more from the original text of Aladdin from Arabian Nights, which I don't believe you've read, but no. I have. Or at least I've read one of the many versions of Arabian Nights. Yeah. Um that's that's one of my biggest problems with the new Disney live action remakes is they're trying so hard to be accurate to the um source material and the time period, but that's not what made the movies great back in the day. Is the fact that they were set in very distinct time periods and weren't afraid to break that yeah. barrier they weren't afraid to make references um whereas like the new mulan which i've never read the original mulan text but i have listened to a couple of different podcasts of retellings of the stories from other people who have and i understand that the new modern live action mulan is a lot more accurate to the original poem but, but that's not what made the original right. mulan so great. That's, that's not what made it popular i mean if you were to make they honestly also took away a lot of her own willpower and said it's magic and fate and that made her a lot less of a strong female character i think in the live action yeah they should have just 
remade the movie exactly the same live action <laughs> with Eddie Murphy as a dragon cuz that's like how do you how do you do the movie without the fucking dragon? I mean, that was Madeline's that's our daughter. That was her biggest complaint. She was like, Mushu wasn't even there <laughs> when she watched the live action. Yeah, I... And I mean, it like, they did The Lion King, and it was great that they brought James Earl Jones back as Mufasa, because there's nobody else could do Mufasa. They really should have brought Jeremy Irons back as Scar. Yeah, their Scar fell a little flat, in my opinion. I get what they were doing with the casting they of The a, Lion King. Yes. They wanted a more, like, ethnically um, accurate to their area in the world in africa kind yeah, of but cast i, I totally don't know. Like, get that it, it's 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 an animated film just because it looks like real lions doesn't mean it's not an animated film and guess what jeremy irons scar is just so good um altogether i don't think i've watched any of the new live action disney remakes and like them better than the original I, no. I can't think of one not cinderella not beauty and the beast not mulan not lion king not aladdin all to me the original 2d um animated films from disney's renaissance period were better and it could be the fact that I'm tied to the nostalgia of them, how much oh, I enjoyed I mean, them yeah. as kids. Though, I just, I don't know, every time I watch them, I'm expecting more and I get less. What, what they need to do <laughs> is they need to do a live action. Uh, what they should do is just, they should make a live action Emperor's New Groove, but with all <laughs> the original actors just playing the same roles. But is the llama a real llama or is it a guy in a llama suit? It's a guy in a llama suit. <laughs> It's David Spade in a llama suit. That's who plays Cusco, right? Oh, is right? that who is plays? David Spade? It is Cusco. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It is David Spade. It has to be. I can't picture anyone else playing him. It is. It's got to be David yeah, Spade. Yeah, it was David Spade. And then Patrick Warburton is Kronk. Whoa, John Goodman was Pacha? I didn't even realize. Overall, what's your what's your like takeaway and rating on the animated Hercules movie that we watched? Um, my overall like takeaway, not bad. I mean, if you've seen it, you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's only an hour and a half. I mean <laughs> um, Yeah. Well, we didn't even mention that his like trainer guy is it's Danny DeVito oh it would be Danny DeVito yeah who could only like if they make a live action he's gotta be Danny DeVito right like <laughs> just I don't put know. Danny some DeVito pants is on. pretty old now though yeah but he's still making Always Sunny and that show is weird as shit yeah that's true yeah you know Danny DeVito could easily just cosplay Phil with like some satyr pants he's 78 well, Danny DeVito's <laughs> only 410 yeah yeah he's He's oh, that's smaller than me. Yeah, he's a little guy. Oh wow, that is. I mean, in all, to be fair, I'm not much bigger than four ten though. No, I'm only a couple inches bigger than four ten. Like he's not that much smaller than me. You would be bigger than Danny DeVito though. <sighs> yeah. Um. So I would say my rating for this movie is like I'm gonna use the scale of cats, and I would put this at like an American short hair, like a very average common cat, still a good cat. Yeah, yeah I think this movie American is, short hair. It's real middle of the road. Yeah, it's not it, bad, but it, it's not like the greatest movie ever. Worth watching, and you you're looking for a nostalgic callback and yeah. comedy. Oh, yeah, if you're just yeah. All right, I think we should have like some kind of outro. Oh, I'd say that's that, and thanks for listening. Oh yeah, thanks for listening. We'll be here. This is Blunder Days, a podcast about media. I hope you have a nice day. Bye.